Hi, welcome to the Nikolai's genetics lessons. I already made uh, hundreds of videos about genetics and law of probability, but still people every day ask me to make more. So here is another problem. Uh, Elios and Hank are both carriers of sickle cell anemia and autosomal recessive disease. If a couple has three children, what's the probability that exactly two of the children will be affected and exactly one will be unaffected or healthy. So if you think that you can solve this problem, I recommend you to stop video here, try to solve this problem on your own first and when you would be ready you can run video again and you can compare your answer with my answer and explanation. So um, what do we need to start this uh, solving this problem and um, First of all, we have a hint that this is autosomal recessive uh, disease and uh, we also told that uh, Elios and Hank, so both parents, uh, are both carriers of the sickle cell anemia. So what uh, does it mean? Carriers mean they are both heterozygous because uh, this genetic disorder would uh, uh, the child would be affected when he would be um, homozygous recessive for so for example if we have two alleles one would be uh, capital A that stands for the normal variant of gene another one would be recessive allele small a so for the child to be affected with this genetic disorder the child must be small a small a genotype and the other two genotypes capital A and capital A homozygous dominant would be normal and um, heterozygous genotype also would be normal and both parents belong to this heterozygous genotypes they are not affected with this genetic disorder but are carriers because they have one allele that uh, in homozygous form would cause this genetic disorder. So how we are going to solve this problem? So we have two parents, so let uh, parent 1 be on top and uh, let's list his genotype and his genotype going to be capital A and small a carrier and parent 2 would be here on the side and uh, second parent also would be capital A, small a genotype. Now we built a Punnett square and we can predict the genotypes in the progeny and their frequencies. So here we would have capital A, capital A, capital A, small a genotype, capital A, small a genotype and small a, small a genotype here. So as you see the probability that uh, they would have a child that is going to be affected with this genetic disorder is one quarter or 25 percent and three quarters they have probability that uh, their child wouldn't be affected with this genetic disorder and now we are ready to solve this problem so let's return to our question uh, if the couple has three children, what is the probability that exactly two of the children would, would will be affected and exactly one will be unaffected? So let's list um, this uh, variant. So two would be affected. So we would use abbreviation A for affected and U for unaffected. So uh, what is the probability that the first child would be affected? And as you see, according to our um, Punnett square here, uh, the probability that um, the child would be affected would be one quarter. So one quarter. And, and the probability that the second child also would be affected, uh, probability is the same, one quarter and probability that the third child would be unaffected 
is 3 out of 4. And this is probability that the third child would be unaffected. So now we have to multiply all these independent probabilities and um, our answer would be 3 out of 64. So this is probability to get this combination but our question doesn't specify the order in which uh, children go uh, affected and unaffected. So this is not the only one possibility. Another one would be affected, unaffected and affected and um, the next uh, variant would be uh, unaffected and affected and affected child. So this would be the first variant, this would be the second and this would be the third variant. So only three variants how we can have uh, two affected children and one unaffected. So that means that we have to multiply our answer by 3 and our final answer would be 9 chances out of 64 variants. And this is going to be our answer today. I hope everyone were able to solve this problem correctly. If not, now you would know how to solve analogous problems if you would find such problem on your exam. And this is all for today. Thank you for attention. Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.